Hello, this is a specimen of a heart of a very small child or an infant and part of the brain parenchyma. We will first focus on the heart because this is where the primary pathology lies. So let's first orientate ourselves. We're looking here at the aorta, the aortic valve. This is the left ventricle that has been opened for you and this is the left atrium. The pathology actually lies in the interventricular septum. So this whole surface that we're looking at is the interventricular septum. And you can see here that there is a defect in the interventricular septum uh, or a hole, which actually goes right into the right ventricle. So this is a ventricular septal defect. The VSDs or ventricular septal defects, they are classified according to their location in the interventricular septum. In this particular instance, because it is just below the aortic valve, this is known as an outlet VSD or a subarterial VSD. So normally, if the VSD is an isolated abnormality, uh, there will be shunting of the blood directly from the left to the right heart, and this is known as a left to right shunt. Uh, however, there are some instances in which there is a right to left shunt instead of the usual left to right shunting. The right to left shunts can occur if there is any associated congenital abnormality in the heart. For example, if there is tetralogy of fellow in the context also of severe pulmonary stenosis. This means that the pressure in the right heart can actually be higher than that in the left heart and therefore force the blood to flow from the right to the left heart through the VSD. Another instance in which an isolated VSD can give rise to right to left shunting is if uh, there is buildup of pressure in the pulmonary arterial system and this leads to pulmonary hypertension and also increased pressures in the right heart and again this then exceeds the pressure in the left heart and we get reversal of the flow uh, from left to right initially which then becomes right to left. This phenomenon is known as Eisenmenger syndrome. So whenever there is right to left shunting, there is cyanosis because there's mixture of the deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart into the left heart and then into the systemic circulation. Other things can also flow through from the venous uh, system to the systemic circulation directly through the shunt and this would include uh, bacterial organisms and this is what has happened here. If we now look at this other part of the specimen, which is actually uh, the brain, we can see that there is a cavity in the brain, and this is an abscess in the brain. In this context of a ventricular septal defect, this is known as a paradoxical abscess, and this is because there has been right to left shunting, and any bacteria in the bloodstream can therefore seed into any organ in the systemic circulation. So a quick look at uh, the clinical picture. The prognosis of VSDs really depends on the size and the location of the defect. Very small defects can actually seal themselves and not give rise to much uh, clinical complications. Uh, of course, if there are also associated other defects, for example, tetralogy or fellow, uh, this can lead to much more severe clinical complications. Some of the complications of VSD would include aortic valve regurgitation, congestive heart failure, uh, complications from other associated defects as mentioned, infective endocarditis and also Eisenmenger syndrome which I have briefly described where there is reversal of the left to right shunt eventually to a right to left shunt uh, and therefore giving rise to paradoxical abscess. So in summary, this is an example of a specimen of the heart of a very young child showing a ventricular septal defect and this is an outlet defect and there is also a paradoxical brain abscess and this is due to right to left shunting.